Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off, passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Active Turnkey Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stoltmeister. And as usual, we have the Tom Olson here. Sometimes he's out, but he's with us sometimes today. Sometimes I'm out, and sometimes Jared's out. Sometimes. You're and that's to find out gonna, next yeah. week, Jared is going to be here. Absent. And there's yeah. going to be a super special guest. A, a so special, oh. you. I promise you, nobody mm-hmm. that's out there. I think we should do a contest, Jared. Okay. Between the time this episode goes oh, out... yeah. To the time the next episode goes out, okay? Okay. If you email Jared Stoltmeister at jared at biolsongroup.com, and I think we should give a limit of how many guesses we should give. Oh, yeah. You get up to three guesses, wow, okay? that's a lot. That's generous. And if you can guess the extra special guest that's going to be on the next episode, you will get $500 off your next property. Okay. What do you think about that? 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, I don't know if they want a shout out or anything on the on here. If you but, want, uh, we'll give you a shout out. That's pretty generous, and it's an upgrade, really. Over I like over that. me. So there's definitely. I'm not something. sure if it's an upgrade. I'm I'm not sure if it's going to be an upgrade. We'll let you guys be the judge. But I will tell yeah. you, super special. <laughs> yeah, five hundred bucks. Super special. So That's, there you go, uh, folks. A little more motivation. There you go. To get a little email, little Jared. Going. Give, get some guests going. Yeah. Who cool. do you think the special, very special guest is going to be on our podcast next year, next year, next, next week? Next week's podcast, It's yeah. going to be the Christmas podcast. Yeah, that's exciting. So don't miss out on that if uh, if you're used to paying attention and uh, definitely throw that out there. They need, to have, bucks, they need to have the name. So you can't just be like, if it's some famous attorney, you can't just say it's mm. like some famous attorney. Or attorney, general. Right. Sure, gotcha. Got to have the person's name. Yeah. Let's. Uh, that could have been a hint, or I could have been throwing people off totally. Tom's one to do that. Yeah. So we're going to talk about, what are we going to talk about today, Jerry? Today we are going to talk about, uh, give you guys an active turnkey update. Uh, so this summer, we we brought it up. We said, hey, guess what? With what's happening in the market, there's some definitely some negative sides to that. But with what we were seeing, we thought that act turnkey was back. We had one deal in the summer that came out. And we thought that that was going to be a trend. And uh, so today's podcast is going to be a little description of of uh, what's happened the last six months and uh, giving you a little bit more information about Active Turnkey and how uh, the name of that podcast was Active Turnkey is back. And mm. and that was true to the its The one we word. did in June or something. July. In July or yeah. something, yep, something yep, like that. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, Active Turkey is back. So we're going to do an update today. So Jared, yep. give us an update. Maybe you can. Jared's can. in the thick of this every it's day. True. And he kind of knows. So what? give us an update, Jared. It, was, it sounds to me, and, I, and I'm in the construction meetings, and I'm in mm-hmm. some of the meetings from the week to week, and I get to, I'm going to look at, tomorrow, actually going to look at houses myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so tell us where are we at right now with Active Turnkey and... What kind of deals are we getting for people? So we've sold um, about five or six recently. And now, back in the day, that would have been two weeks worth of sales. <laughs> um, our goal was that back then was so like what eight to, to 12 properties a month, active turnkey deals. These are mm-hmm. turnkey deals. Um, and uh, so five to six doesn't sound like too much, but five to six is more than we've done in five years. Active turnkey. Active turnkey, right. right. Uh, so those of you who are familiar with Active Turnkey, it's our Burr method. It's what we do. Uh, we provide you the services from start to finish, wholesale rehab. Uh, we have an in-house property manager, and then we also work with your uh, with our preferred lenders or with your lender on getting you refinanced. Typically after six months. So, mm-hmm. uh, if so, you want to know more about that, I do have an yes. Active Turnkey book. I believe it's on our website, or you can go to GoodSuccess.com and find it there. It mm-hmm. is also on Amazon if you want to go to Amazon and buy it there. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's even an audio version of it. That I believe is on Audible. So I'm not 100% sure truly. about that. So I don't want to like, but I think that happened. I'm pretty sure Amelia got that out there on Audible. Um, but it's called Active Turnkey. It's not a very long read. I'm mm-hmm. not going to not gonna toot my horn and say it was a huge book that I put out there. But it <laughs> does explain 
more into details. And if you want to know more about that, you can go back to some of our beginning episodes, yeah. episode one and two and three mm-hmm, and four. Mm-hmm. And we really kind of kind of drilled down to what the active turnkey process is. Just like Jared said, it's kind yeah. of the Burr method, yep. but you're doing it with a provider mm-hmm. that understands this is what the you know the end buyer yep. wants. Um, and we pretty much do all the work for you. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we kind of almost say it's kind of like, it's not a done for you, it's a done with you yeah. process. Yeah. Because kind of is more with you. It's a little bit more active. It's not that you're going to be out there painting the walls and mm-hmm. doing drywall and mm-hmm. replacing plumbing. But it's more or less, um, it is kind of a little bit more of the responsibility is on yeah. you as an investor um, it, from the very get-go um, from those. And so the market has really shifted. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really shifted fast. And it's interesting because it's shifting in a completely different manner and a completely different speed in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Um, And in our area, there's even, it's even like different in different, you know, sub pockets and different markets, even in our own little tiny market here Mm -hmm. in Northwest Indiana, we're seeing it, it, you know, the market react completely different in different parts of the market. Mm -hmm. Um, We're seeing houses over, you know, $350,000 a super long time. And that's been happening for probably almost a year now, almost. It's true. Um, And, you know, so they're sitting on much longer and then, you know, properties in that, you know, 150 to 350 range, you know, of kind of really normalized, Mm -hmm. Um, in our market and properties under 150 sometimes are going fast yeah. on retail and sometimes um, they you kind of have these sub markets that have kind of mm-hmm. popped up right mm-hmm. so for the last two years it was very abnormal yeah and anything you put on the MLS right. anything you listed mm-hmm. was sold within you know seconds hours mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure days. Um, and that completely has kind of shifted. And the yep. whole rental market yep. has shifted as well. True. I mean, we're having a harder time, I believe, today renting properties than we have ever had. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe that this is a trend that's going to continue. Mm-hmm. But I do believe that right now, that's where we're at. We're, we have many things that are kind of hitting us at the wrong time all at once, right? So we mm-hmm. had a lot of properties that um, we rented that needed to be evicted Mm -hmm. and they all need to get evicted and we kind of finally got them through the court system and they all got evicted so we had a lot more properties than normal happen at one time we also are hitting um at the worst time of the year Mm because nobody really wants to move and in december even the beginning of january Mm -hmm. in this area it's really cold in that time the time of the year so that's also become coming a problem um, and also, like just the economy in general mm-hmm. isn't isn't super super he- great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, people are losing jobs to a certain degree. It's not like super prevalent yet, but there is some of that out there. Uh, other expenses have gone way up. Yeah. We're starting to see gas come down a little bit, yeah. but we're seeing other things go way up, like food and other things like that. Yeah. Um, so I just be careful on the rental. Um, side of things, I would be careful to push, continue to push those rents. Yeah. Try to be a little bit more conservative with what mm-hmm. you're thinking about for rents right now. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't mean I don't think that they're going to like necessarily drop or right. go down, but I just, I think maybe we were pushing a little too hard yeah. for for a little while. Well, and, and that goes with the market. For two years, it was just, well, you just Slap it up higher. Just, just go that, higher. You just keep going. Keep on going. <laughs> yeah. And you got what you wanted. <laughs> right. You know, and, and Tom's right. The the days on market are up today. Um, but when you compare that to a sit that was something that was completely abnormal where houses were selling in hours, mm-hmm. that's not normal. So to say that things are are bad, I don't right. think that's a fair assessment. No, it's definitely it's definitely more of a normal market. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually think there's a little bit maybe of a decline or a little bit of a, of a, of a peaking that happened. But I think you have to take into consideration maybe there, we were too exuberant. It was too mm-hmm. much you know, mm-hmm. for, for two years. And I don't think anybody would disagree with that in any part of the economy, honestly. Sure. Um, but back to kind of like where we're at in Active Turnkey, yeah. um, we are actually seeing houses that we can get now yeah. under contract and really make numbers work really well for right. investors. And it's... To me, it's an exciting time. I actually feel mm-hmm. like our company's more built for mm-hmm. this market than mm-hmm. it, it was built for the markets of the last true. two years. It's true. Um, so I believe that we can serve our customers actually better mm-hmm. um, in this market. And I think if you're a cash buyer, it is even the it's probably mm-hmm. one of the best times mm-hmm. to start buying right now. Absolutely. Um, I think that there's still some pain, to be honest with you, in some other you know a lot of the uh, different parts of the country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think out west is really tough. I'm telling you, Saint, um, out in uh, 
even even in like Salt Lake, where he has been booming for for years, is really going to take. I think is taking it hard. Um, you, you're seeing markets like Phoenix. You're seeing markets like Las Vegas that are just exploding. I mean, we're already seeing thirty percent drops in those markets. Um, California, people are still moving. I, I can't even say that I blame them. <laughs> honestly, like that's just me personally. Um, but. Uh, other than the fact that there's great weather sure. and it is a great place <laughs> that, that way to live, um, man, I, there's a lot of reasons to leave, leave California right now. Um, but uh, we, you know, we're seeing this little pocket that I feel like what's kind of happened is a lot of people, you know, got scared, mm-hmm. right? And when mm-hmm. a lot of people get scared all at once, mm-hmm. things happen. And we're in the we're in the market day every single day. So mm-hmm. these the numbers that you're seeing that get reported don't really, you know, kind of show you the true picture of any real true market. True. They're really national numbers mm-hmm. and they're kind of over a big scope. And um, a lot of the numbers that you kind of get and feel and hear are are backdated. So you don't really, uh, and this is why what I always, you know, I, you always talk about like the person that invests, a lot of times they're investing, you know, when they should be not investing and mm-hmm. then they wait too long to invest when the time is actually right. Mm-hmm. And I actually think 2023 is going to be a great time mm-hmm. to be investing. And I think right now we are primed and we have got great deals that yeah. that I think could be great, especially for active turnkey. Yeah. So, so you know, before we talked about the idea of active turnkeys coming back, one of those reasons, again, days on market, they're up. Uh, and so uh, we also have sale prices are going down. Uh, and now again, this is indicative, not just I'm like, oh my goodness, the, 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 the sky is falling on value. It's not value. It's this just throw out a sale price and you got what you wanted. So, and every single sale was higher and greater than the previous one. Uh, you know, as far as comps goes, you just went higher than the other comps. Uh, so, um, you see days on market are up, sale prices are down. And what I mean by that, you're seeing reductions because the days on market are up. And so if you're a buyer, this is a great time to buy. Before this was always a seller's market, I would say it's a buyer's market today. Um, and that's how we are. That's how we see it. Um, so we're, we're, we're aggressive in our, uh, how I would say in our, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think we're aggressive. I, I've talked about this several times on different calls this last week. We are aggressive in our acquisitions. In our but patience. We're, but we're also aggressive in a way where we are way lower mm-hmm. on our offering right, price, right, which right. is allowing us to be able to get these deals right. and then pass these great deals on to our investors. Because for the most part, there's a lot of other buyers that have kind of exited the market. They mm-hmm. don't know how to get financing mm-hmm. in this market. And they're not really seeing sure. the big picture. They're not seeing the opportunity. And that always happens. Sure. It always happens when there's great opportunity. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, you know, the, Mm. these investors that, you know, Warren Buffett's of the world that, you know, make these statements like when everybody else is greedy, you should be scared. And when everybody Mm. else is scared, Mm. that's when you should be greedy. Mm. And in a way, you know, again, like I don't like to say I'm a greedy person because I'm really not, but we are getting a little greedy on our, our, our offering, which again, allows us to be able to give those great deals to our investors, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. Because I don't feel like we've been able to do that for the last two years. Now, with, with interest rates as low as they were, it still really made sense. Sure. A lot of people really you know, thought they were great deals. And I think they were great deals. We, we picked up mm-hmm. a lot of properties in our own personal portfolios as well, me yep. and Jared both. Yep. Um, but I think right now, if you're looking at it in the big picture, mm-hmm. I think it's actually a better opportunity to buy today than it, than it was. And especially if you're working with cash. And mm-hmm. in order to work in the Active Turnkey program, mm-hmm. you got to either have cash or you got to have access to cash through private lenders. Or honestly, I do want to throw this out there. Conduit Capital, my um, hard money lending company, mm-hmm. is more than willing to do some of these loans with people. Um, and you can learn more about you know them at youconduit.com, Y-O-U, the word conduit. Uh, capital, I'm sorry, conduit, you conduit cap, capital.com and find, you know, talk to Adam there and mm-hmm. he can show you exactly how we can help you maybe do some of these active turnkey mm-hmm. deals mm-hmm. with you. But um, I'm telling you, I think we, I'm excited about where mm-hmm. we're at right now. Um, I, I know that we are selling deals right now, I think in the, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. might need 20, 30, $40,000 worth of work. And these are great, you know, you know, rental deals and mm-hmm. good markets and we're like i said we're being very picky right now i'm way more mm-hmm. picky than than maybe we have been in the past um and i think i think it's working out well what you're seeing in the market itself though is is that there's always there's always like three parts of the market right 
um, in, in any market, there's always those three parts. And the th- one part is full retail. Mm-hmm. And full retail would be like a newly built home or in something that's in really good shape. Or it'd be a flip. It'd be somebody right. that has like over improved a property. They've gone in, they put in granite, they put in nice extra finishes. They make the house look like, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's retail. That's one part of the market. And that market, honestly, is still kind of alive. And I've we've kind of shied away from that for the mm-hmm. last eight months. Mm-hmm. I actually believe in maybe a quarter or two, we might go back into that just a little bit and kind of kind of just make sure that we're we're careful about going back into mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But um, honestly, I think I actually like flipping um, retail in the in the low end of the market. Uh, honestly, that's just 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 me. I know a lot of flippers don't, and they mm-hmm. don't understand that piece. I think I thrive in that piece personally. Um, but there's that part of the market, right? And then there's what I would call grandma's house market. It's the <laughs> it's the the, the dated home. Mm-hmm. It's livable. Yeah. Um, it's something that you know, if you were a slumlord or if you didn't care about your tenants, you could just you know put yeah tenants in there. And there's nothing wrong with it. And maybe maybe I use slumlord a little too loosely there. I don't necessarily mean that you're a slumlord, but I just kind of mean like if you don't if you if you just want it to be safe and you mm-hmm. just want it to be livable, mm-hmm. you don't really care about getting the best tenant and you don't really care about having the nice home and making maybe the most money, then that's fine. And if that's your game, go for it. Mm-hmm. Different markets work better for that. Um, as well, but I, but like that's the other sub market. So there's a there's a second market where it's kind of like it's livable, mm-hmm. it's safe. The plumbing works, the electric works, HVAC works. The the roof might be you know five ten years old, maybe 15, 20 years old, um, and but it still has got maybe ten years worth of life on it. And then the third part of the market is what I would call the distressed part of the market. And for the last two years, we haven't seen any of that. No. Right, like we haven't seen any distressed properties. Any distressed properties we got were from wholesalers, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We didn't see anything hit the market. We didn't see anything else that we could really get our hands on. And we bought quite a few from wholesalers over the last couple of years. Um, but now you're seeing these pop up, yeah. even HUD Home Store, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which I think for two years, I think we got to bid on a total of two or three houses maybe yeah. in two yeah. or three years. We're bidding on, I think, eight or nine houses today mm-hmm. on that one you know, acquisition channel for mm-hmm. ourselves. Mm-hmm. So you have this distressed part of the market that is really, you're starting to see more and more of the distressed market being able to be, get, get put on. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really making it, so, and and we have less and less buyers, right? So yep. more and more properties are getting put on every day. Less and less are going, are are are, are going pending. Yep. And then you're also seeing houses sit thirty. We're seeing mm-hmm. sixty. We're even mm-hmm. seeing ninety days already now mm-hmm. on some of these properties. And you know as well as I do, especially bank owned, anything that's distressed. If it's bank owned, if it's you know somebody died in the family and they had to take over a house. Um, divorce happens, all those things happen. And so more and more of those houses are getting put on the market and less and less of them are selling every day. So Mm -hmm. you're just every day, the amount of available properties is going up and up Mm -hmm. and up. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that's just kind of, it's kind of just stirring the pot and slowly but surely these things just keep slipping. We're seeing a lot of price reductions. Actually, in the last two weeks, Jared, I've actually seen, I track three things in two different markets, in our market here and in Pensacola. And I, I want to look at three things every day. I look at how many houses get listed, mm-hmm. how many go pending, and how many price reductions there were. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And, and and we're starting to see now, it's funny, I'm actually seeing more houses being reduced in a daily basis than are being listed. Interesting. So so we're there's there's finally mm-hmm. to me what that tells me is that there's um uh coming to grips. Mm-hmm. It's it is like mm-hmm. a looking in the mirror and saying, "Okay, mm-hmm. you know, w- w- one of the persons that we used to work with used to say, "I think I have a pile of gold and I realize I don't. I've got a pile of poop or something." <laughs> and so there's a little bit of that coming. There's a little bit of reality. Right. That's getting brought into the market, and it really a lot has to do with interest rates. So mm-hmm. I, I would think if you're a cash buyer out there, if you've been sitting on cash, this I think honestly I feel like this is the time yeah. to be thinking, hey, yeah. like Stop. I don't want to wait too long. I know I and I know I think there's wisdom in holding a little bit of cash, and I think this is a good time to be holding a little bit more cash than you would have normally. But hey, if you're that person, you've got you know three or four hundred thousand dollars sitting around, um, I, maybe you know take. 100,000 of that and let's you know I, I would I would encourage you this is the time this is a great time to buy active turnkey 
Um, and to get it into a deal that's a much better deal than what you would have gotten um, otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate Tom talking about the different types of properties because one thing uh, we see often is uh, that people haven't reduced. And that's when people just aren't, uh, they aren't really connected. Uh, I, they're just not understanding the market. Like well, they're you not, can't. So they're not coming to grips with the reality. No, you, you, you just, <laughs> if you're trying to sell a product, you just can't sit on that too long because then you can be in a really bad situation later. Mm-hmm. If you, and we, we've, we've been there, done that over the years and learned our lessons. So we're aggressive with our reductions. We're aggressive with our sale price even. So you guys may see some uh, deals that are turnkey deals that may come in lower than actual market value. Um, and as we understand where the market's sitting, and, and it, that might be advantageous for you. The other thing we're seeing is uh, the deals that some re- recently, we've had a, a few deals we've acquired that have been qualified for ATK or active turnkey with small repair amounts. That is, that is. I'm even how, more aggressive. As, yes. much, as, as aggressive as I am yes. in acquisitions, I'm even more aggressive on the ones that. Mm-hmm. Need small repairs, yes. Well, and back in the day when we first started doing Active Turnkey, those were plentiful. They were everywhere. And and we were selling them like hotcakes, as we used to call it. Um, and uh, now I, I don't think we're in a situation where we're just get a ton of those. But we have seen where we've acquired several, I'd say three, four, five of those types of deals. Uh, and uh, what we just sent one out to our list yesterday um, where minimal so who, work. I have a question, Jared. Who's, who's getting those deals? Because... You know, I'm on the list and mm-hmm. I get to see, mm-hmm. it seems like we're selling houses sometimes before they hit the list. You know, Great point. I think, I think we ought to like give people the secret. Well, it's true. Uh, what, I do what is have buyers. There's a secret, Jerry. The secret is uh, if you're interested, I need to know, first of all, if you're on our <laughs> list. Because uh, I, I here's here's inevitably what happens. Because Tom's absolutely right. If you're saying Jared, how come you just told me you've sold five or six ATK deals? I've seen one. What, how did that happen? Uh, well, I think it's only fair. It's a great question. You know, if if yep. I'm in the audience, I'm thinking that's what yep. I'm thinking. I'm yep. like, well, dang it! Like, uh, where's my I didn't deal? see those deals. And honestly, either Jared's lying. I'm telling you guys, no, they're happening. It's <laughs> or awesome. or but you, the, Jared always says this. He says the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? right. So that's right. That's what we. That's what. And honestly, we we actually do like that. We we, we mm-hmm. do want you to. Be that that person, and yeah. if you're if you're an active turnkey buyer, that's the buyer that we are really interested in, anyways. That's the people. That's who we built our business for, mm-hmm. you know, five six years ago. Yep. And um, I will just tell you, like that is the case. You know that that is the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are interested, I would tell you, like, get with Jared. Email him, you guys. E- the email is Jared at BiolsonGroup.com. Email Jared. R R O D. Yes, it's Jared, like spelling. the Jared from Subway. I gotta be different. Um, or Jared's the uh, not, not the guy from Subway. I used to say that. I don't say that anymore. That's true. I, I, I forgot I've about that. Yeah, but isn't there away. isn't there a jeweler? Jared, uh, the gallery. That's the of same jewelers, yeah. spelling there. It's yeah. also Jared. J A R R O D. It's so funny because sometimes I do voice. It's always um, spelled voice to text, and it always spells it with an E. And I'm like, should I change it or should I just? I'm leave usually it? upset about it. Yeah, um, it, it, I, I hope it, you don't get upset it, with me. It definitely bothers me. Anyways, but I'm yeah. telling you guys, get on Jared's little short list. He he's got. I know he's got three or four people right now that are mm-hmm. looking for deals, yep. and they want specific things. And this is and he's communicating with them on mm-hmm. at least a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, some if you're that out person out there right now, and you're like, I got a 1031 or something, I got to mm-hmm. make this happen. Please let us know. Like we really yep. do want to accommodate. We do really want to help. Um, you know, for, for the for the, the general person out there that's just going to kind of look casually, that's great to be on the list because mm-hmm. something might pop up and maybe that list yeah. every time it gets sent out, mm-hmm. it kind of like sparks your memory. Oh, man, I did say, hey, I wanted to buy four this year. Or yep. I wanted to buy 10 this year or 20, right? Mm-hmm. I, I know we got a couple of you guys out there that want to buy 20 Still. this year. Um, but um, that is really the way to do that. Uh, you guys can find out more about us at uh, biosyngroup.com. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going to actually be changing that URL soon, Jared. That's right. I'm not sure we're going to talk about that in this podcast or next, but you will still be able to reach us. So just mm-hmm. so you know, you know, even though this this is going to go out and maybe you maybe you're listening to this in 2024, <laughs> if you go to biosyngroup.com, I believe it'll still be a URL that will still mm-hmm. get you to the right website. But we are doing a branding change. Um, that we're going to talk a little bit about more in future episodes mm-hmm. as well. Uh, but and I'm, I'm actually it's exciting to me about that. I'm excited about that, and I think our team is all on the same one page mm-hmm. when it comes to that. Jared, <laughs> one page, one yes, team. one team, there one page, um, one group network. Did I let the cat out of the bag there, Jared? I think it. I did. So if you're if you're if you're listening, you you guys just knew what we're going to kind of do a brand change mm-hmm. from the Olson Group Network to the One Group Network, and we're excited about that here. 
um, at one group or Olson right. group. I'm not sure. We'll really I think it's going to be, it's going to take a little time for us to kind of, yeah. uh, to, uh, get, get, to get used to that a little bit on our end. It takes me a while to learn these lines too. So but we'll all in all, Jared, anything, any final thoughts you want to talk about today on where we're at on the active turnkey? No, I, I, Tom said it. Uh, he mentioned, you know, it does seem that not as many deals go out as what we're selling, and that's completely accurate. Um, and so uh, I, I sold a house today to an investor. I'm sending a contract to him today. Uh, and it just so happened we were conversing and I had a deal that's coming up. So so if I send a deal out to you guys, out to the list, it's gone through the process. We've, it's 100% we finished, through. Yep. Yeah, we, we finished the rehab. We, we cleaned the property. We got HD photos. Uh, we sent it to marketing. Um, and usually on about turnkey, that time. On the turnkey. On the turnkey end. site, correct. On the active turnkey. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, uh, that's the other part, part too. On the active turnkey, we're getting bids. Mm-hmm. We're trying to make mm-hmm. sure that we've looked at this house. We've looked at it from the top to bottom and try to come up with everything. Yeah. If we know ahead of time, hey, we've got these certain people and they're on deadlines, they want to make these things happen, you know, we'll try to, you know, You'll accommodate see as much our as we can. turnkey deals sooner than you would our active turnkey deals because the active turnkey deals, the numbers need to be firm. They have yeah. to be hard because uh, you're the buyer. You're the one paying that cost and numbers need to make sense. So so that's true. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, so if, if you're interested, if you're looking, especially if you're a cash buyer and you're interested in active turnkey, you definitely want to let me know. Uh, you know uh, that is something that that as we move into that, I have some buyers who have who, one guy who's bought who's purchased two active turnkey deals uh, in the last few months, um, and uh, now he's done probably fifteen with us over the years. But if you're one of those people, you're like Jared, I, I think I can do that. And and you know one, one question, Tom, I was going to bring up real quickly. I was going to save it for the next episode, but uh, my question is, you know, with interest rates being higher, uh, higher than they have been. Uh, you know, some investors may be looking at that and looking at the return and saying, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, my question to you, Tom, and maybe you can help me answer this as we close the episode is how much out of pocket uh, after refinance does it make sense for me to be okay paying? I know that may vary by the buyer, but like if I'm into the deal single digits, that's pretty good. <laughs> Right, I would think so. I mean, yes, I mean you're you're getting a much better return on your money. I mean, honestly, the active turnkey you're getting you're getting a better deal all around. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's that's the thing that you have to understand. You're in the position that like some people like us are at times. Like mm-hmm. when when you're being you're you're closer to that real distressed market. You're getting closer to that distressed market price. Mm-hmm. So you know, at the end of the day. And honestly, like you may cash flow last for the first couple of years once you refinance. The other pro- mm-hmm. o- option here is to just stay in these deals cash. And if you stay in the deals cash, you know you're going to cash flow way, 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 way more. Oh, yeah. sure. And so, and a lot of times, if people are into the deals cash, they're not looking as much on that, like, well, what does it look like leverage? Because it mm-hmm. doesn't really matter to mm-hmm. them, right? Mm-hmm. So instead of them making two or three hundred dollars a month, maybe they're making eight, nine, ten, ten, you know, a thousand dollars a yep. month yep. on that same property, and they yep. can build up those cash reserves much better and much quicker. So I actually believe, you know, and like I said, I think we're going to get into a future podcast of mm-hmm. you know forward, you know, casting. But um, I think that we are in a situation now. We've already kind of seen. Um, the Fed's starting to slow. Um, I also kind of feel like we're also starting to see uh, CPI come down. And I also believe um, in my heart of hearts that prices went up just like they did in re- like real estate's kind of like an, an afterthought. It happens after. And even and, and even the prices in real estate come down later than everything else will come down. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're also going to kind of see like the prices went up so fast that it's actually going to be easier to see deflationary numbers hmm. in the future because of how fast things went up. Like right now, it, you're already seeing this in cars. Um, like cars are already going down in value, like honestly, super fast, like mm-hmm. faster than you would even think you're, you're able to get. And I'm not, and I don't think they're done. I think they're going to continue to go down in value. You just saw like, you know, Carvana de- de- declare bankruptcy. Um, and you're going to see, you're going to see more of that kind of pain mm-hmm. in different types of the market. But when, when you're talking about real estate, um, real estate's data is at least three months behind. Mm-hmm. Just the data alone is three months behind. But the, the prices take a little while to move because of the data being late. So mm-hmm. because the data is late, um, the price is also kind of, and you don't really know it unless you're in the market. Um, so to, for us to be able to sit here and say, hey, we're picking up properties yeah. so we can be able to sell them to you at you know, 60, 70, $80,000 mm-hmm. know, active turnkey, 
And honestly, we couldn't have even have bought them for that those prices Mm-mm, not even close. 10, 12 months ago. Um, so that's why I think, like, I know I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know that we're able to offer a great product. I know that we're offering a valuable service. Yeah. And I also do believe in the long term, if you look at, if you would look out three years from now, I think you're going to be a, a lot happier. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't know that we're going to see, you know, two, 3% rates. I'm not saying that. I don't really think we should really expect that. True. Um, but I do think that they, I think that we're going to start seeing some softening. I, a lot of the uh, rate increases have already been baked into the current mortgage rates. And I think if mortgage companies can start to see uh, the Fed slow, that they can kind of feel a little more, more comfortable being a little bit more aggressive on discounting their own rates and kind of getting back to a natural market um, when it comes to rates. So, which I think is a, gr- which means, you know, mm-hmm. this is a great time to buy active mm-hmm. turnkey because sure. maybe you don't refi for six or nine or maybe you wait. Maybe you wait a year, two mm-hmm. years to refinance. And I would actually tell you to wait. Um, you know, I, I and that kind of even, that kind of even is the detriment to our company sure. um, <coughs> because I believe that the quicker you refinance, the quicker you're ready to buy another deal mm-hmm. from us, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you that. Because I believe it's better for you, not necessarily because I sure. believe it's better for me. Because, but sometimes I believe um, it's an easier loan to do if you wait six months, and it's Absolutely. even easier if you wait a year. So, um, when you're doing these refinances, um, there's a there's there's reasons to wait yeah. um, that are are you know I, I know some people want to get them done as fast as they can. Some people are like I want to get them done three, four, five, six, whatever, mm-hmm. and that's fine. Like if that's yep. your goal, yep. and you're all about that return ROI, you're all about that your little thing. You're not really focused on the big picture of financial freedom and how you get there. Um, you know, because sometimes I think you can make it's just I, I, there is an argument to be made. Yep. You know, like the Dave Ramseys of the world that will say, just buy them all cash. And like you, I think there's an argument to be made that you might reach financial freedom at the same speed as if you try to leverage everything and, mm-hmm. and, and continue to go. So, and honestly, like I can see both sides of the argument. I think there's good arguments on both sides of that, of that, of that fence. Um, and I definitely think you're in a less risky position by mm-hmm. owning less properties and owning them in cash. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and again, that's too like, not necessarily the best thing for us for selling houses, mm-hmm. but I can tell you, and I can be honest about it and be genuine and say, hey, like, you know, that might be the, a, a good option. But I think right now is a great time. I don't know how long it's going to last. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we could continue to see this for a year. We could continue to see this for two years or three years. I, we've never seen a real estate market be bad for more than two years. I, I don't think. I mean, I, we, we, you go back in history and you don't really see it continue to go down and go down for more than about two years. Um, I mean, we see, we see 2008 um, and I kind of feel like we went we went down to about 2010 and we kind of stayed there till 2012 and then we kind of you know went back up. But I believe that that whole bubble was based on real estate and was whole based on you know people giving loans to people that they never should have mm-hmm. ever gotten loans for and it was kind of created by real estate this i don't believe is being created by real estate and a lot of times even in you know bad economics real estate doesn't even go down mm-hmm. um so like there you don't know like we just know right now we have this little <laughs> opportunity um and we could be sitting here next year saying hey we got to still have great opportunities we could also be sitting here next year saying you, you know maybe <laughs> maybe maybe interest rates go up and maybe prices go up like i don't mm-hmm. really know what to tell mm-hmm. you there i don't think that's going to be the case um i believe that interest rates will kind of slowly kind of trickle down um over the next couple of years um until something else happens you know yeah you know and and uh just putting a bow on it you know the last couple of years it has been easy to acquire as if you're looking for turnkey i mean you know it was appraising that the interest rates were so low uh kind of making being making a difference in a portfolio or growing it though in this way this is where risk comes in mm-hmm. um and where you do have great opportunity and where a lot True. of people yep. made their money back in the day the last few downturns is right now mm-hmm. um and so uh it's true. We haven't had to really risk much uh, recently, but this could be a good time, and, and uh, especially if you're going the cash route, for sure. Um, so normally we sign off by saying, you know, active turnkey, the best way to buy, and it's applicable today. <laughs> Whereas Absolutely. before we yes. weren't selling as much <laughs> that product, but but now that it's back, we believe that you could do both. It's good good options on both sides of it, and we like to believe that we can provide you with value on both sides. So we do build rental portfolios we for do. investors. I want to remind everybody about that. If this podcast has brought you value, if you think, 
hey, maybe Olson Group, One Group Network, is the uh, place to go. I, we would encourage you to tell your friends about us. Mm -hmm. Ask your friends to listen to the podcast. Maybe share it on your own social media feed. Um, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Follow mm -hmm. us on social media and let everybody else of your friends know. Give us a five-star review on mm -hmm. Apple Podcasts. We'd really appreciate that. Yep. Um, and um, tell your friends about us. Absolutely. And again, like you said, we do build rental portfolios for investors. So you can go to our website, which is currently uh, buyolsongroup.com, and you can join our, our list or you can email me at jared at buyolsongroup.com, and, uh, and we can get you added there. And that way you can see our deals, whether they be turnkey or active turnkey, mm -hmm. and uh, we can talk together. And at that point, we set appointments and we can discuss what's best for your criteria and your own portfolios. Mm -hmm. But until that time, we appreciate you joining us. Active Turnkey, the best way to buy rentals. Have a good day. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.